Welcome to today's session, Transforming Your Thoughts to Transform Your Life. My name is Jennifer Norman. I'm the founder of the Human Beauty Movement. We're also known as the HBM. Now, the HBM is an organization that is all about the beauty of becoming. It's that continuous growth, the continuous learning, the continuous unfolding of our truest, most beautiful selves. That's what we're about. So thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up for yourself and being part of the movement. I would like to introduce you to our host today, Tanu Oja Singh. Tanu is a certified spiritual life coach, a certified mindful meditation coach, a trained hypnotherapist and radical healer. She, believe, she believes awareness is the first step toward healing, so she helps people shed past baggage and unlearn all that is not serving them anymore, so they become happier and more able to thrive in life. So that's why this session is going to be so wonderful. She's going to help us to transform our thoughts and therefore transform our life. Welcome, Tanu. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And yeah, because I feel the transformation happens when you take actions. And the first action you have to take is on your thought level. Because the thought creates your emotions. The emotions creates your feelings. And feelings creates your energies, which is actually the whole and soul funda of vibrations and the frequency in which you vibrate, in which you carry yourself. And that's how you start attracting certain things, certain patterns, certain um incidences in your life i'm sure you must be also aware of you know certain patterns which you are carrying in your life and i am very much sure because you have also done a lot of work on yourself so you must also be knowing how the transformation feels like when you are actually willing to come out and break the pattern right yeah. it is so hard i mean mm -hmm. i think that changing people's thoughts is probably one of the hardest things to do. I think that when people get stuck inside their own heads and when you say, oh, well, don't think of that purple cow. The only thing that you're thinking of is a purple cow. So it's like, how do you then get away from a thought which may not be serving you? Exactly. So first, first, first step is towards, first of all, the awareness should be there, you know, that, okay, this is why I'm attracting certain things. So for example, if, if somebody feels that, you know what, I am never on time, like no matter how early I plan my schedule, when it's time to reach office, I'm always late because the subconscious mind, you, when you say this to yourself over and over again, that no matter what, I'm always late. So you are actually spelling it to yourself. Spelling is a spell. Your thought is creating that pattern where you are talking to yourself in a way where your subconscious mind is carrying all the thoughts and they are putting you in that situation. For example, no matter how much early you wake up, last moment as you are stepping out, something will happen. Maybe you are just going towards your car and as you are walking or you have gone downstairs, if you are living in a building, you immediately remember, oh my God, I forgot my phone. So now you have to come back upstairs mm -hmm. or I forgot my wallet or something. Or I need to go to the bathroom. Common, mm -hmm. common excuse, right? So why is this happening? Because there is a pattern of subconscious mind where you are actually saying that I'm always late. I am never on time. So always and never, they are very strong words. Mm -hmm. When you use these words, they actually starts manifesting those things. The manifestation mm -hmm. starts itself that, okay, because the universe is listening to you. And somehow, no matter how cautious you are, something will happen where you will, you will have to come back to your house and get something. Or you will be stuck in the traffic or your, file, or your um, tire will be flat. Something, something out of blue, something will happen. Yeah. So, because yeah, a lot of thoughts are the culmination of behaviors that may mm -hmm. happen over time, or it may be the result of feedback that we're getting like if somebody were to tell you you are this way or you're that way you are never on time you are and so sometimes we take that on it becomes part of our identity it's like exactly. I'm I'm never on time I am not responsible I am not dependable like those sorts of things become ingrained in our psyches exactly because see this is how it is said the uh, planting of the seeds 
and mm-hmm. thoughts are like our seeds mm-hmm. so for example i'll give you an example of my cousin right mm-hmm. so um it's in her <laughs> it's in her pattern where um, again no matter what she will be late she's never on time mm. and it's it happened i feel like it can be my observation where there are so many things also part uh, some kind of role for example your willingness of having that commitment to yourself that i am going to try my best to be on time to reach on time right sometimes the procrastination kicks in okay the alarm went off at 5 but you are still in the bed by till 5:30 or till 6 right mm-hmm. you have to go to the gym you have to uh, come back and then you have to have the breakfast and then you have to bathe and you have to get ready and then you have to run to the office in between if you don't have 5 min- uh, or 10 minutes of uh, extra time will you ever be able to make it mm-hmm. right so these factors also play a big role so willingness of coming out of this and breaking the pattern taking it as a challenge is also important mm-hmm. of course the subconscious mind is reading but what about your conscious mind conscious mind is also playing a certain role so not mm-hmm. everybody will be operating on only the subconscious level for example some some people you know they operate from your heart and your uh, like they go with your feelings and gut feelings and all those things i am that way but if i talk about somebody else they may also start questioning okay logically they will be like okay why this is happening they will start reasoning everything they will start questioning everything then they will sit with themselves not completely depending on only the subconscious mind but taking the charge of their life and their emotion and their thought that okay i know what is wrong i know why i am am i i'm always late i know if i hand, uh, man, uh, manage this thing if i wake up at 5 exactly at 5 just fighting my uh, sleep for i will be on time so subconscious mind is very important but putting some part of your conscious mind also on work is very very important taking things as a challenge because if you are not able to challenge yourself you will be in the loop and you won't be able to come out of that loop so if somebody is carrying a pattern from their childhood that because somebody told them as an adult it can be applied to them that okay do you really want to come out of this if you are not confident enough and you have a fear of public speaking or you are a you know camera shy person but as an adult are you willing to face that fear because when you are willing to face that fear you have to work on that thought and to work on that thought you have to have that 100% commitment with yourself that yes i am going to face the fear and get the breakthrough once we get the breakthrough then sky is the limit Exactly. That's why. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I I am finding that um and, and I recognize it in myself there are certain things where I'm like, oh, it's mostly about like working out every day or you know something like that where I'll just make excuses or mm-hmm. um you know something happens. It's interesting because I was just listening to um an interview today and it was about the concept of guilt. because a lot of times if we do something it's and it could be very tragic in this particular case there was a woman who was drinking and then she decided to get in a car and drive her kids home got into a massive accident they all ended up in the hospital and she could not forgive herself for being so reckless but the issue was not that you know the that she felt guilty because she did this it was really like well why was she drinking why mm-hmm. like it's like peel back the layers of the behavior right. and the thoughts that lead you to do something like that mm-hmm. and then you'll actually get to that place of subconscious and where that comes from she was you know not happy in her marriage she was using it as a crutch she was using it as escapism and so it was kind of like well why Why are you doing that and then can you at that moment forgive yourself and give yourself permission to be human give yourself permission to make mistakes and get to a place where you empower yourself to make a choice to yeah. think and behave differently rather right. than being the victim and saying well i can't help myself and i'm i'm leaning right. this particular behavior it could be food it could be alcohol any kind of addiction 
shopping, it could be anything, it could be anything destructive or detrimental. And that's where the transformation comes is when you get underneath that all and recognize what you are being served by that thought, you know, where that keeps you. And you'll realize that there is a part of us that does like the woe is me. It's kind of like, you know what? I feel sorry for myself. And this is mm -hmm. myself. This is my way of assuaging myself. I'm going to try to get that love or that comfort from drinking or from sleeping in on, and from not leaning into the discomfort of working out because I know that that's, you know, better for me or, or eating, you know, junk food instead of healthy foods. All of those things give us like a momentary hit of dopamine or, or something like that, which is always going to be fleeting. And if we can recognize that in the long run, it's not serving us and we are so much better than that. And you know, connecting deep down with what that emotion is of where we want to be and then how we're going to get there. I feel like that's where the transformation can happen. And, and a lot of times people don't consciously get it. They can listen to a yeah. conversation like what we're having and it may not click, but then all of a sudden, you know, something might register, something that we say, something that they think of in terms of a connection or relevancy. And then they're like, you know what? That's exactly right. And that's why a lot of people go into hypnotherapy because it's yeah. like, it's, it's helping to kind of get to a place where they're hacking into the subconscious in a way that they hadn't before. And they're allowing themselves to really get to that place of, you know, wow, I'm, I'm not consciously and logically thinking through these steps and trying to justify my behavior. I'm now knowing where that emotion comes from and that pain and those thoughts. And I can reprogram those thoughts and then choose for myself a better way of going forward, the place where I really want to go, but my thoughts and my behaviors are getting in the way. It happens. I truly and I truly and totally believe and agree with you because, you know, the subconscious is the only place where we generate certain patterns, where we create certain beliefs, where whatever conditioning is being done to us, that's what we carry or our whole life. But also the life experiences we are carrying with, with ourselves, the incidences that happen, the traumas we went through, that is the main seed where we start feeling certain emotions. Again, the thought is creating the emotions, right? Emotions mm -hmm. are creating the feelings, right? So when the emotions and feelings kicks in, then sometimes if you are not empowered emotionally, you will be sucked into that energy. Mm -hmm. You will go to the deepest level of whatever emotion you are feeling. It can be sadness, it can be disappointment, it can be hurt, it can be agitation, even anger. There are so many cases where in anger, people have done such things and afterward they regret it. Mm -hmm. They felt like, oh my God, I shouldn't have done that. You know, even with the with the arguments also. But you have, again, the, the thing you mentioned was so beautiful that there are different layers of emotions mm -hmm. which we need to sit with and then think about it. Because even when we are doing the hypnotherapy, like one of my clients, she asked that, uh, ma'am, why, why are we only carrying certain patterns with different people? So I said, because it is in your subconscious mind. And only if you are willing to let go of that thing, then things will work for you on conscious level and on the subconscious level. Because if somebody is behaving a certain way and you, instead of addressing that thing, within yourself and you keep blaming the other person that he or she should behave or he or she should change that's mm -hmm. not going to work mm -hmm. transformation happens when you are willing to dig deeper inside you mm -hmm. when you know your inner self when you know where this is coming from and for that you have to sit alone with yourself you have to sit and spend some time with yourself so that that's right. You are able to assess yourself by yourself because when we are alone, the thoughts which comes up, you have to be aware of those thoughts. What are you thinking about yourself? Are you thinking about yourself? Are you thinking about others? And what is the context? The thoughts are positive. Are they filling you with good energies? Or the thoughts, thoughts are of loneliness, of depression, of 
okay, this happened, that happened, and I'm still in that world where, which has completely gone. Like that is in the past. We don't know what is going to happen in the future. We are in the present moment, right here, right now. Mm-hmm. So instead of being in the present moment and enjoying whatever skills you have, whatever personality you have, whatever things you have in a positive way in yourself. Like, I don't know how many people sit every day with themselves and cherish their little, little celebrations, like little wins. It can be anything. So Mm -hmm. if you are filling your mind with positive thinking and positive energies and positive seeds, no matter what, the breakthrough will happen. The transformation will happen. And as you mentioned earlier, sometimes when we are watching these kind of stuff, like for me also, I, I, you know, uh, all the time I'm just looking at the videos about awareness and how you can be a better person every day, all the versions, how things improve in your life just because you are working on yourself because whatever you are carrying within you, that's that's what reflects in the outer world, right? Right. So coming back to the awareness, when, when you feel that, okay, I heard this, Jennifer and Tanu were talking about this and maybe you are in the middle of something, maybe you are doing some kind of project and one thought will come and you will be able to connect with us energetically. Oh, this is the topic I heard. And I think this is what is happening with me. And I think I need to do this with me. Because when you want to free yourself and liberate yourself from something, your mind will over and over, over and over, over and over, keep banging on your door. Mm -hmm. It will tell you, I am here. I'm seeking for your help. Please come and address me. You have to listen to that voice. Yeah. Rule number one, you are a good person. People are inherently good people. And if you can start from there, instead of feeling like the world is out to get you, if you can start from the basis that everybody is trying to do their best, everybody has the best interest at heart. People make mistakes, things happen, but Everything that occurs is there to either be a gift to you or teach a lesson. So training ourselves to have a more open and positive mindset is not natural for everyone. It's definitely not. And so it does take practice. A a, a great idea is stop watching so much news because we know (laughs) that news is just filled with negativity. They call CNN the chronic news negativity network. You know, it's like um, if we can do things to not fill ourselves with dread and fear and hopelessness, you know, turning off the news is actually a good idea or just trying to seek out the the positive news, seek out the good that's that's out there. Yes. And then listen to more things that are inspiring and optimistic. Train yourself in optimism and gratitude because gratitude is t- teaching yourself how to be a more optimistic human being. And so these are things that are going to help to open up more opportunities for you. Then sitting with yourself is not necessarily such a good thing if you're in a death spiral because you don't have enough of that positive Mm -hmm. momentum going on. You really want to get into a place where you can start feeling a little bit like, okay, things are going my way. Okay, things are. And then your thoughts can help to create these emotions that knowing that everything that happens in your life is neither good nor bad. It is neutral. Your reaction to it is everything. And you have control over your thoughts and your actions more than you think that you do. You are going to empower yourself because you are a sovereign human being. Nobody else controls you but you. And so no one's going to get in your way but you. You can choose to ignore anybody that comes into your, you know, into your frame Or you can take it as constructive criticism and feedback and say, you know what, I'm going to use this to improve. Thank you. Thank you for that lesson. Thank you for that feedback. Thank you because I am in this journey of continuous improvement and I have 
mighty goals. I have a mighty purpose. I am going to be the best that I can be every day, a little bit better than yesterday. So transforming your thoughts is not necessarily something that's going to poof happen overnight. Sometimes we get lucky and over time, over time, that little drip of water will all of a sudden create a flood and you'll be like, oh, now I see the light. Now I get it. Now I understand. And something resonates with you. And that's what we're hoping is that these messages of beauty, these messages of positivity, these messages of well-being are going to be, you know, we're going to be champions in your corner these messages are going to be a reminder to you of how powerful that you are and that, you know, all of these self-limiting beliefs that we put around us and everybody does it, whether it be imposter syndrome or I'm not worthy or I'm no good or you know, a lot of it is, you know, you just haven't had enough practice yet. You, you know, perhaps, um, you know, aren't in the right profession or setting yourself up in the right environment. There are so many reasons why we feel not right with ourselves. And in many cases, if we sit with ourselves for a little bit, we recognize, you know what, I have a choice. I can put up with it and change my attitude towards it, or I can leave the situation and try something new. It's up to us. We don't have to sit there and complain about our lives. That is so true. So when, when I say about sitting with ourselves, there is a beautiful exercise which I generally give my clients to do is there are a few things which you can do. First of all, if you are thinking or if you are going in the spiral where you don't want to go, first you have to commit to yourself. Okay, I'm sitting, I'm going over there. But the moment it happens, just pick your diary, pick your pen and start writing down how is that making you feel? Mm. And then start setting positive intention. How would you like to feel at this moment to dissolve this emotion? Because this is such a powerful tool, uh, Jennifer. I try it every time I'm feeling something. I just sit with my diary and my pen and whatever feeling is happening, whatever emotion is happening, I just think, okay, I'm feeling this way. I acknowledge this. I accept this. And thank you so much for showing up because if you don't acknowledge that emotion, that emotion is going to come over and over again to you because that needs to be addressed, right? Mm -hmm. The best way to address that emotion or address that feeling is to sit with it and then try to snap out in a very beautifully positive, gradual way where you don't feel any distress, mm -hmm. where you don't feel any sadness or disappointment or where you're not able to feel any, we're not allowing yourself to feel, feel the intensity where you start feeling that you're going to the dark tunnel. No, you're not doing that. You're just sitting and you're talking to yourself. Okay, I'm feeling this. This is not working. I have felt it for almost 10 minutes. What next I can do? Uh, write it down. Second thing, stand up. Stand up from that place. Mm -hmm. Walk around. Three minutes walking, just going from the living room to the kitchen, to the bedroom, to the bathroom, wherever the hall, go downstairs into the building. Because what you're doing is you are actually shifting the energies. Yeah. And when you stand up and move around, the energy shifts. The moment energy shifts, you start feeling better. Third step is after you shift the energies, do at least one thing you like to do. It can be talking to your plants. It can be making yourself a nice coffee. It can be sitting and drawing. It can be singing. It can be reading a book. It can be anything which involves your senses. This gives the sense of fun and fulfillment where you start feeling a little better over and over again. But again, this is a practice. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to have that practice in yourself, within yourself, and have that commitment that this is me and this is my responsibility to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I am going to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. this is a very, very, very big commitment. Often what we do is we forget ourselves in, in you know, in process of pleasing others or loving others or whatnot, right? But this right here, this is our responsibility because we have come alone. We'll go alone. So if we can do so much for everybody else, why not take out some time for ourselves and cherish ourselves and love ourselves and just celebrate ourselves? Exactly. Because that gives so much empowerment that you start feeling better and better every day. You start getting the hope 
which you have lost you start getting the joy the when you sit with yourself you start feeling happy sometimes you will just smile because you're just feeling good mm -hmm. that's it yeah and you make a good point about um energy shifts and i would also like to add environment sometimes we don't set ourselves up for success in our environment and when we talk about habit stacking or we talk about you know light in the room natural light fresh air colors flowers things that can you know help to lift our spirits because a lot of times energies you know they come from within but they're also reflective and so you know we are very symbiotic with our environments with nature with um our circadian rhythms we're finding out more and more how important it is to wake up and instantly go outside as early as we can and get some sunlight things like that drinking enough water and you know we'd be surprised at you know how we nourish ourselves with our with nature mm. and with the environment that we're in um you know rather than sitting in you know at a, at a desk you know completely static with you know bare walls you know being able to stand up and actively work or um, doing, you know, walkabout meetings, um, uh, you know, socialization is so important, talking on the phone rather than just like texting or, um, you know, making real connections is uh, something that definitely helps lift our spirits. And so, you know, when we think about all of the things that we can improve you know, we little by little, we can, you know, start to feel better about ourselves, we can start feeling better about our situations, and not feeling so hopeless or feeling so down on ourselves. Let us take the moment to congratulate ourselves for those small wins. Um, you know, they no matter how small they are, I took a shower today, I made my bed today, I walked the dog today, I got dressed and I put on a little bit of makeup and I brushed my hair, you know, just things like that, depending on everybody's going to be different. Everybody's at a, you know, starting at a, a, a you know, a different level or a different place you know, any, any given time that they might be seeing this, um, you might be well on your way and just need that little, little bit to be motivated to get, you know, that new promotion that you want or, you know, win an election, who knows, it could be anything. Um, but yet there's others that are just, you know, feeling very absorbed and overwhelmed. More and more, we know that people are feeling, you know, just like this mental anxiousness, anxiety, burnout, feeling like, you know what, it's just not worth it anymore. I, I, I give up, you know, they, they're just like kind of just checking out. Mm -hmm. And so for those, you know, those of, uh, of our fellow humans that are in those place, we place, we get it. We absolutely get it. I have definitely felt that way myself in the past and it's not easy. And then we're not saying that these are any kind of panaceas. Um, sometimes you need to sit with it and feel, you know, all the feels. Don't feel bad for feeling what you're feeling. Exactly. You this just don't want to, you know, build a house there and live <laughs> live there in that yeah. place for very long. But, you know, edge your way, like recognize it, feel okay about not feeling okay. And then see what you can do little by little. Be like, all right, now what? Now what? Now what? That is so true because... Because this is a very important point, Jennifer, because I know you don't have to build your house over there and sit with that thought and emotion, right? If you feel that you are not able to bear these things by yourself all alone, please reach out to the professionals, which is very, yes. very, very important. Because you are not alone. There are people like us. There are people like other therapists. There are people like healers. Even Sometimes if you feel that you are so alone that you don't want to share your stuff with your family, your friends or anybody else, please reach out to anybody who can help you professionally to get you there where you want to be mentally and emotionally and spiritually. Mm -hmm. so reaching out is very, very, very important. I, I come from India and I have seen that, you know, unfortunately, I have seen so many cases and recently which happened I told you about the person I lost. Um, yeah. She was going through so much. Mm. She was going through so much. And uh, she never told anything to anybody. She never approached mm. anybody. And 
it was so overwhelming but because now when i hear her stories then i come to know oh my god she was going through so much and mm-hmm. she did not share it to anybody so please if if you feel that there is anything which is overwhelming which you are not able to take it any more please reach out to the professionals because those are the people who are qualified to help you mm-hmm. and, and it's when we are in the contract everything is confidential exactly break anything so your things will be between the counselor or the therapist or the life coach or whoever you are going to connect with and definitely they are going to help you so please don't feel hesitant or feel ashamed of reaching out that no i'm not going to reach out i don't know how to try give it a try there are so many people now they give the free discovery calls just go and go and get those discovery calls maybe you will get something from there right right and what happens is when we are stressed or we're anxious or we're just absolutely overwhelmed it's very hard to think creatively because we you know our mindset is just racing and it's in despair and it's in this place where it's it's just not easy to find a way out because you're stuck in this in this vibration of of just like nervous anxiety and so really doing those meditations or doing something that can allow you the space to clear your mind and to think about, you know, just being present, being here. Interestingly enough, doors start to open, you start getting downloads. I've heard of many people who will Uh, you know, whether or not they're feeling anxiety or not, they'll go take a walk on the beach or they'll go into a forest, into the woods. They'll do something where they're just getting their mind off of things. And the amount of new ideas that starts to spring forth, or even in the dream state, the, the, the amount of ideas or creative solutions that starts to come up is really quite amazing but uh that's what can happen if you kind of liberate your mind to think a little bit differently and so yeah a a, a therapist or some professional can also help you to unlock those places where you can kind of get out of that what i call the death spiral um and certainly um it's funny funny story uh, a personal story when i was um in my late 20s i went to see my very first therapist and probably went for maybe four or five different sessions and then afterwards i thought to myself this isn't helping at all this talk therapy is nonsense i can do this on my own and i feel like that was all also a catalyst because sometimes you know it it's as if uh it like wakes you up to knowing that you have the answers inside of you and yes. truly that's what a lot of therapy or life coaching healers you really are they're not quote unquote healing you they're actually mirroring you and reflecting back things that you already know and the answers are are coming forth from you, they're able to provide some expertise and ask some questions or provide a creative exercise to give you a new lens on things in some cases. But however it happens, in this case, I empowered myself to heal myself. And that was all I needed. <laughs> that See, quote, that, that, that. Therapist <laughs> that actually was a good therapist because it, it taught me that I could heal myself. And so that was the beginning Beautiful. of a healing journey. <laughs> so I, I can completely understand, Jennifer. And I'm happy that you got your answers. Uh, that was <laughs> so I feel, I believe when we are in the moment where things are happening to us, our mind gets fogged, you know? and if we have that capability if we are capable enough to figure that out as you mentioned that for some people it's easy they will just go for a walk they will connect with nature and they'll be fine but not everybody is like that some people stay in that fogginess mm-hmm. so therapist help you to clear that fog and then is able to show you the path okay yeah. you want to walk on this that's what you need that's what you got <laughs> It's interesting because the other thing too that um, is an important point of this to know is that you can't go into meditation expecting a breakthrough because that defeats the the purpose of actually going into meditation. It's not like an objective needs to be met at the end of the meditation where all of a sudden you've got an epiphany. The idea is to just go into nothingness and expect nothing more. Truly. That is so true. But I would also like to uh, share one uh, thought which my mentor uh, shared with me recently and I was very surprised. 
I have to figure this out that what was maybe when I maybe you will be clear on this I don't know so what happened is she said that when you are in sadness when you are in uh, uh, not a very good space we would recommend not to meditate and I asked her why so she said that uh, because the mind is already not in a good state when you meditate you vibrate in certain frequency and that's what you will start manifesting so I am still on the uh, path of exploring this that what was the deeper meaning behind it because every time I listen to her she mentioned this so yeah. I have to figure this out because that thought is in my mind mm. and she's traveling a lot she travels a lot so I have to connect with her and then figure this out that if you are not in a very good state especially when you are in the deepest and darkest thought don't try to meditate because that can affect a little more hmm. so I have to figure this out but it was just an information which uh, came uh, through her so I felt like uh, mentioning it because mostly I meditate when I'm vibrating um, and mm -hmm. very nicely like in the morning uh, my best time it can be a three minute meditation of my heart chakra just putting my hand on my heart and breathing out whatever is not serving me anymore and inhaling whatever is for my highest good just three minute inhalation and exhalation and that brings my energies my vibrations beautifully up because I am waking up with a blank slate no thoughts and that is the best way to improve and set the intention for the day mm -hmm. I'm also doing one more thing for uh, body positivity which is called uh, asking forgiveness of whatever kind of mistreatment you have done with your body because unknowingly or knowingly sometimes we abuse our body by ourselves Mm -hmm. We are angry. We will not eat, right? Uh, we will start eating junk uh, because of some voids or whatever it is. Yeah. So I started feeling very lighter and lighter when I started uh, doing the whole open open technique. That is, uh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you, and I love you. I'm so when you talk to your please body, please forgive me. Thank you. I love, and you. I love you. Yeah. So when you start talking to yourself. Physic in the physical body also you start feeling better immediately because somehow we are also putting the pressure of our thoughts also in our this is our body this is our mind so when anything which is heavy and uh, it takes a little bit more to process the emotions it's all manifesting in the body it can yeah. be in form of pain it can be in form of cough and cold or whatever it is right so when you start talking and taking care of your body and ask for forgiveness and say that I love you, you automatically start caring about yourself. You automatically start getting into a nice diet, have lots of water, drink, um, do exercise, drink uh, detox things which will cleanse your body. You know, you start waking yeah. up, you start enjoying yourself, your presence of a human body, accepting yourself on this planet Earth also starts happening. So mm -hmm. this is just a random uh, thought which came in my mind and I just thought to mention it and share it with the audience because there may be a lot of people who may need to connect with themselves, with their body. And this also uh, is a beautiful exercise to feel better every day because when you're physically fit, everything starts making sense. Then you start feeling energetic. Then you start feeling excited. Then you start feeling enthusiastic. Okay, I'm going to do this. Right. It's true. It's true. And um, I think that to the point of treating our bodies like, you know, a, a, a temple where, you know, your, your spirit resides, mm -hmm. remembering all of the things that our body does for us. I remember um, recently I was part of a mindful hydration uh, session, which was so beautiful. And it was talking about how when water crystallizes, it takes on the energy of what's going around you. And so if you talk to your water, and some people actually do this, they'll take a glass of water and they'll start talking to it with affirmations and then they'll drink it in. In some cases, some people will label their, their water bottles and then drink it in. It will actually nourish you with the vibration of those good thoughts and those good vibrations. And um, so, you know, those are some of the lessons that are, are, are very positive thing. And you're going to show me your water. Yes. Right? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so I learned it when I was doing my hypnotherapy training. So I used to see my mentor, uh, Veena Ma'am. She used to just close her eyes and she told us to whole class also, she said, whatever you want, Mm -hmm. whatever you want to have in this water like for example for me peace contentment happiness and joy 
is my uh, motto right because when you are peaceful contentment happy and joyous you feel energetic everybody around you feel energetic and you are good like life is good so she said whatever you want because your palm has the energies your whole body has the energies but palm are so uh, connected with your subconscious because all the tips are connected with your subconscious mind so when you mm-hmm. energize this palm mm-hmm. and you visualize that okay the energy the white light energy coming from the universe is going into your palm and just close your eyes and visualize this energy going into your palm and just cover this glass and just connect with the water and imagine that the energies from the palm are going into the water mm. and whatever you want health wealth happiness joy anything just feel that beautiful light in that water because this is the way you can energize it if you don't have crystals if you have crystals that then there is other way so for me every day when i wake up the glass will be like this like full glass of water i'll energize it and then i'll drink it Mm-hmm. and if you keep doing this there is also one more thing which she told me that if you keep doing this for at least 21 days you yourself will feel a major positive shift within and sometimes it so happen that the taste of the water also feels a little different because it's full of so much positivity mm-hmm. interesting yeah i was also um listening to a session where the um the host was talking about the different vibrations between prayer and affirmations yes. and in many cases when people pray they're asking mm-hmm. sometimes they're not even asking they're begging like mm-hmm. oh lord please give me a million dollars let me please find this lover that i'm looking for let me please get this job and there's a desperation there is a a vibration of nervousness or anxiousness that goes along with that prayer so yes. that's not going to be necessarily as helpful for you as if you can confidently state to the universe i am going to get that this is in my future i see myself i can feel the feeling of what it will be like mm-hmm. to have the wealth to have the lover to have the job to have the home and if you feel that then you attract it and so those thoughts that come with those it's just like once it gets into your cells once it gets into your belief system once you cultivate that into your bones mm-hmm. that is where the transformation starts to happen that's when your thoughts your real thoughts without a doubt shift into beliefs and then start to transform your life beautiful bang on bang on i truly and totally believe in that because this water technique which we do when we are doing it we are so much in confidence and in so much positivity and when i'm saying this i'm smiling because i feel that within me, you know yeah when you truly feel that within yourself only that thing will happen one more sentence which i generally use in my affirmations uh when i pray i, I generally just say that thank you lord for everything and just keep everybody safe and healthy that is all i pray like apart from that nothing else comes in my mind since childhood i have been like this right so but when i do this uh, thing i just say one more thing uh bless this water for whatever is for my highest good mm-hmm. so whatever is for my highest good the universe knows it or you can say if you call god or supreme energy or higher self or higher consciousness whatever you can name it right that power knows what if, whatever is for my highest good and then you start think then you start seeing the positive shifts as well you will also be surprised that how some people quietly vanish from your life without any quarrel without any disagreement without any argument without any excuses without any explanation they will just vanish because the vibrations have changed so much so mm-hmm. whatever is in your alignment you start attracting those things and whatever is not in your alignment with your mind body soul energy spirit mm-hmm. that will you completely start not go vibing away. anymore yeah yeah not really the same match of energy and you're not filling each other's cups up as much yeah when change starts to happen you can expect that to occur you you know there will be a shift in your environment there'll be a shift in the people that you start to um to hang around there'll be a shift in what you're listening to there'll be a shift in how you present yourself to the world 
Truly. Truly. You change inside out. You change inside out. And mm. this change is beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Tanu, I want to let everybody know about the exciting sessions that you have coming up, which are separate from our Transform Your Thoughts to Transform Your Life sessions. These are Embracing Your Inner Child. And so Tanu has coming up on August 16th and then every, um, I think it's every third Wednesday of the month through the end of the year, um, these wonderful workshops, which are all about embracing your inner child. And so I will be sure to uh, guide everybody over to the event right page or to the universe pages where they can sign up for these sessions. They're only $33 um, and certainly well worth it. If you haven't done any inner child work before, where you're going and really diving into the things that had occurred to you either during childhood or just in your past, frankly, um, because we keep our inner child with us even into adulthood. And, uh, we, and more than we know, um, that inner child is speaking to us, is lashing out, is causing us to make our decisions. And so understanding what the motivations are and why the inner child is behaving a certain way and having a, a, a renewed relationship with that inner child is really powerful really, really powerful. And so I want to invite everybody to come to um, a session or two, invite those that you know, let them know about it. And, uh, you know, we're going to really do some deeper work. It's yes. absolutely, yes. absolutely amazing. It's going to be wonderful. Yes. Tanu, thank you so much for your time today. I want to thank everybody who are joining us and who are watching this on the, um, on the recording. And please stay in touch with the Human Beauty Movement through social media. You can find us at the Human Beauty Movement, which is our handle pretty much everywhere all over the internet. I hope that everybody has a joyous night and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you, Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.